Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's uh, webinar um, as part of our quantum speaker webinar series hosted by ATART Quantum um, Global Quantum Working Group. Um, my name is Jason Lee. I'm one of the working group um, government chairs. Um, I'm joined by chairs Allison Schwartz, Lily Chen, and Terrell Franz. Um, we are excited today to have Bill Newhouse speak with us. Uh, Bill is a cybersecurity engineer with the National Security um, National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence um, in the Applied Cybersecurity Division of Information Technology Laboratory for National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, he, his work pushes for the adoption of cybersecurity standards demonstrated by building functional security references um, designs from commercially available technologies in the NIST National Security Center of Excellence Labs. A project's functional reference designs result from collaboration with academia, in industry, government, and are published in the NIST SP-1800 series practice guides. He is presently leading projects on data classification and migration to post-quantum cryptography. Bill has been part of the federal government since 1986, focusing initially on telecommunications, then information assurance, and now cybersecurity. Um, also, just be advised there, there may be time um, for questions at the end of the presentation, so please feel free to use the, um, the Q&A feature um, or raise your hand um, or put it in the chat, um, and we'll hopefully have the opportunity to um, take those questions at the end. Uh, Bill, I'll turn it over to you. Very good. Thanks. And just give me a thumbs up. You can hear me still or, or some sign. Yeah, we hear you. Great. Perfect. So uh, we don't need a cover sheet on the screen anymore. There we go. Um, thanks. So at the center where I work, the NCCOE is the acronym. We're essentially an applied cybersecurity lab. And, and in the bio of me, it's it, you know, described that I, I lead projects where we build things. And we build things as, as sort of a step three after we've defined a challenge space. We've assembled a team of people to work together. And then after we build it, we've published a document. We do things like communicate through ATARC and other groups to get to the people you know, to get to where you do your learning uh, and hopefully that we have something useful to you when we're done after building and documenting that, you know, we, we can advocate what we've created so that you you see an opportunity and, and wish to engage with us, know what we've done, uh, ask questions and, and, you know, continue the dialogue so we can all make, you know, more stuff happen. And in this case, we're talking about um, security, cybersecurity related to the threat of a crypto analytically relevant quantum computer. You, you all know that. That's why you're in this working group, I assume. So I'm not going to spend too much time diving in that direction. But back to the center, we do publications. We can do white papers. We can do NIST informational reports. Uh, we do different things. We, we're going to put up a code repository for this project uh, is something I'll describe in a moment. And essentially, what I'm here to tell you about is this project the, the goal of this project is, is initiating the development of practices to ease migration um, from what we do, what we use today that is being deemed as quantum vulnerable to that CRQC uh, with the algorithms that are being standardized by Lily Chen's team or Lily Chen's old team because Lily's evolving her role at NIST, but uh, not losing Lily, but just anyway, that, that team that she has been stewarding for the last uh, several years uh, has executed a process and are still doing so to standardize post-quantum cryptography algorithms. So we're talking about classical computing devices, computers, memory, silicon, uh, where we run asymmetric algorithms, key public key algorithms, and the need to replace them is, is a goal here. And so this project is in advance of the standards because um, those standards are right now in draft form. There's three of them out as FIPS drafts, Federal Information Processing systems um and and those three drafts are are just finished sub receiving comments and that team will be adjudicating those comments making the final publication uh, even better because people submitted uh you know things they noticed and asked for and and uh you know not big changes you know we don't expect big changes to come from that lily's team does not and so those standards come out and at that point we have you know a standard but that people can aim at implementing and using but in advance of that we've been doing this project for a bit and i'll describe how long we started thinking about the need for this project about two years after Lily's team started thinking about the process by which they were going to identify and 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 then standardize on some new algorithms. So uh, here's the timeline. We started in September 2018 thinking about this 
and had a workshop during COVID and drafted a description of what we wanted to do. So back to that idea that we, we define the space we want to talk about. And, and we weren't the only ones thinking about it, but we, we recognized that here at the center, we could make an impact on, on a, a huge challenge. Any crypto migration, whether, you know, think about if you have experience of going from SHA-1 to, to SHA-2 or 3, then, then you know, and, and if you have experience looking for how others have done it, you may discover that, you know, there's still SHA-1 out there. And, and that effort started a long, long enough ago that we know this migration, which is, which is potentially should be the biggest one ever undertaken, you know, besides just actually implementing PKI in the last 25 years um, as, a, as a crypto modernization thing. This is huge. So we went through and, and, and now we also have pushes that I've list here in May of 2022, the National Security Memorandum really codified that, you know, this activity is, it needs to happen at the center should have a, a, a project in this space, and we do. And we kicked off in, in later that summer to get our collaborators and, and, and actually have our first kind of meetings with our collaborators, what they could bring to our collaboration to help ease the migration and and what could they bring is what i'll be talking about the rest of the time here and i'm going to give a, enough time i hope uh to make sure we have we have your your you have opportunities to ask me questions uh some of which i can answer and others which we'll, we'll go find the answers um collaborators everybody on this list has signed an agreement with nist to work with here at the center to work on this project a cooperative research and development agreement and all the agreements are equal and the same um and it's cool if you look at this list it's it's got some some players you absolutely know and maybe a few you don't and 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 maybe you don't know why they're here um they could all tell you why they're here i could tell you why most of them are here because no i know why all of them are here because they see the challenge too and, and so the this group of companies and picture that there's at least two or four or you know 10 people from each company participating i've got a large pool of experts who've been teaching me uh, all along as we've been moving through this project what it, what it means and the challenges to do these things and notice we have international collaboration. We have we have we have Samsung from you know South Korea. Um, you know the Santander is a bank in Europe. Uh, you know a lot in in Spain as uh, the, the collaborators I'm working with. Talus has two versions of themselves with us. Udomaco is a German company. I'm not going to name everybody, but you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of European and Canadian and other you know and American. And and then you start looking more specifically if you're clever and you say oh Kudelski does IoT. Ah, the IoT is an interesting space to play with. Udomako cares about embedded systems, uh, as does you know others. And, and so this collaboration has been growing and, and will continue to grow as we attack uh, the challenge of, of, of where uh, asymmetric encryption is being used and the migration to, to the use of it for digital signatures and key exchange mechanisms. All right, I kind of keep track of where my mouse is so I can move the slides forward. So that's a, that this is, you know, the, this collaboration is my favorite thing because I get to go to meetings with all these brilliant people and, and we pick things to do together. And I'm going to describe what we do together. Um, these are the things that pushed and gave us focus. The first one at the top is the most important one to us, you know, dear, dearly that our colleagues are doing something amazing with the rest of the world to standardize and, and we're helping to take that first step toward what can you do in advance. Some of these memos and other things listed put some pushes on us and we're engaging the community and we're, we're working also with standard development organizations um, and I'll, I'll not name them all, but Etsy, IETF, ISO, uh, ITU, you know, if, we, if, if we're not there, if one of our collaborators is there and we're communicating about what kind of, what kind of actions need to happen and occur in each of those spaces. Um, and, and so, you know, being part of that and, and, and that, Standardization bodies are going to be vital to, to, to the migration process because not only will NIST be making standards of the algorithms, but standardizing where the algorithms get used into other protocols becomes hugely important. Uh, a picture, a picture. One of the first areas that um, experts thought of, including us, and, and before I became somewhat expert in this space, was the idea that you you need to know what cryptography you rely on today if you're going to migrate to anything, uh, any new algorithms. And, and that's true no matter what kind of cryptographic algorithm we're talking about. And so <clears throat> we call them discovery tools and, and what can they detect? What do they notice? How do they notice it? What, how do they report those kinds of things? Um, do they mark down the word, hey, this one's quantum vulnerable? Um, you know, that seems like a good idea if that's our task, but you know, an inventory can be used for lots of different purposes. So all the places, the systems and the services that we have in our networks and in our you know, networks, not just IT, but OT and, and 
you know, sensor networks, you know, we can label them lots of different ways. I'll use IT and OT as the two big areas that, you know, might divide the world and, and, and cover everything. Um, these tools will give us some information and we need to use that information to make priority dis prioritization decisions about what I want to do. Uh, and, and amongst the answers will be implement the new algorithms. There'll be other answers too. Uh, importantly on the left, where do we think vulnerable algorithm discovery tools need to look? We think uh, good places to look for your future and now is code development pipelines. If you're giving out, uh, you know, if you have a CI CD pipeline, continuous integration, continuous development, you're, you're going to want to make sure that you're not spitting out, um, you know, quantum vulnerable code when, it, when you have the opportunity not to. So knowing those places is important. Knowing to come back to those code areas and update when, when you can uh, will be vital. Operational network services and protocols. Uh, this is, you know, picture all the technologies we rely on and those protocols we rely on. And so this is, is often thought of, you know, I can watch network traffic and learn something about crypto, uh, or I can find a way to scan into the boxes on those devices to learn something about them. Those also, you know, scanning into things scares people who, who are protecting our networks, right? So these tools need to also integrate uh, at some level. So these are the areas we're exploring, operational systems and applications. You may, as an organization, have purchased some, some an application and you'll, you'll wanna know, you might just have to ask the vendor, but you might also want a tool to double check what crypto did they put into the app application and, and how did they connect with the libraries and the key stores in the technologies where that application runs. And also just how general purpose OSs are, are, are gonna modernize and what, what certificates and, and other places need to be, you know, stared at and modernized to, 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 you know, to use new PQC digital signature algorithms and PQC uh, key exchange mechanisms. So this is a focus, this, is, this was our first focus. And again, I gotta find my cursor so I can turn the slide. And generously, I'm offering you here a view of a table of contents of a publication that should be out as early as, you know, let's say next week, because um, I keep saying next week, and this time I'm right, because we, we, we put our pens down, we did our, our, now we're doing that tech edit to make sure that all the, all the things are in the right place. And this will actually have shifted a little bit because we, 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 we wrote it a, a little better as we edited it a few times. But um, <clears throat> we offer an ex example discovery scenario to motivate you as to one methodology, if you're a medium sized, small, medium business, how you might wanna think about this, we can come up with more. And we are asking you to submit comments on this document as soon as it gets out on the street so that we are offering you um, some valuable information that's helpful to you. Um, we spend some time talking about the threats in this space, um, and, and that's that's just in case you didn't know why this is a, a need. And, and then the architecture section we think will be the, the most important, and then some of the appendices about what we've done in our laboratory to start just learning how these tools look, work, feel, where they, where they make an impact. Um, we're not doing a consumer reports bake off of, of any ilk. We're, we're, we're trying to show you what they do, what kind of output they create. And then we have opened up the conversation about um, that, that maybe a common output format would be, would be important. Uh, at least one that matches the risk analysis systems you have. So going back and I'm double checking my time, I've used 13 minutes, we're good. Uh, I'll be able to get to questions. Look in this box. Um, we have this word normalization and correlation. You already have inventories if you if you control your net, you know, if, you, if you're one who wants to know, inventories have been vital for a long time on your networks and, and you're, they're, they're probably imperfect, but they tell you a lot about your endpoints and things like that. These tools will tell you some things and in some cases, you're gonna have to figure out where that endpoint is and then know a little bit more about it because of something you've gotten from a received from another system. So the, the output format of these tools and the output formats of everything need to meet in a device that's probably one box where this normalization and correlation and analysis and risk ass assessment will happen. You'll need to figure that out based on what you already have. You know, and then I already talked about these discovery tools are new enough that where they go on your network, where they run, <clears throat> will will be something you want to talk with about, you know, with your CIO and your especially your CISO and the folks who are, who are doing your monitoring. And the, the idea is you have some notion of which data is critical to you. You've done a high, high value asset look, and you're going to then use all this data together, these arrows that point into that engine you're gonna get a prioritization on the outside of that. So we have a pub coming out next week. Please read it if, if this is a space that's gonna be one of yours that you're responsible for and give us feedback. 
and tell us what else you need us to do. We haven't really done a lot in the sense of trying to run this against certain kinds of networks or big scale or anything like that. Our, our, our lab environment here at the center is, is good, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't scale to the real internet. And so if you can give us ideas about what other experiments to run with the tools we have in place, then we can get information in front of you and help you uh, in the cause of understanding what crypto you're using. Um, <clears throat> the other work stream, so now I'm switching to work stream number two, and, and, and essentially that's, that's where we are right now. We have a work stream on discovery, and the second one is on interoperability and performance, and, and that is, this is the, the technology uh, folks who build cryptographic technologies that we rely on, and, and they are experimenting, running tests, getting measurements for performance and interoperability, of the new algorithms that are in draft form today, using things that we have in our laboratory from other collaborators like HSMs, using each other's you know advanced code that's already started to say I'm ready to, to handle this PQC stuff. So uh, I, I noted you know there's a lot of different companies they're bringing the expertise, they're working with each other, they're doing experiments and, and connecting into our lab um, because we give them access and then we're documenting it and we're sharing it. So this will become a publication, and we picked some of the protocols here uh, based on the interest of our collaborators. This would be a good place to push for what else. Um, um, when, when some of the, the new collaborators come in, they've got some ideas. We want to maybe do a little bit more work with uh, VPN, Ike, other things in that space. We might do some work in some, uh, some proprietary protocols that the financial services sector looks at. Those are all decisions we'll make as a, as a collaboration. And, and when you come to this publication and, and, and look through what we have, tell us where you would like to see us do more demonstrations, what metrics you need that aren't already in there. And if you have questions about them, obviously ask us those questions. Um, the document itself will, I just when I had to turn the thing sideways to give myself more room to, to cover each of these bases where we're trying to show you a, a test profile, the, the, the test, you know, and, and, and lots of test profiles and then performance testing and lessons learned for each of these different protocols. So uh, a lot here and, pretty much we've identified as we're drafted this publication that we should put it in a repository. So we're gonna get ourselves a GitHub and a NIST GitHub on usnist.gov for that, that part of GitHub and, and make this information easily digestible and improve our ability to get it to you. Because if I have to get a, a you know, NIST papers, uh, we're very careful and we, we do a lot of uh, editing to get them ready. And then we do the draft thing and the final thing. Well, if the data doesn't need to change because of any editing, let's get it in a place where you can get to it. And we'll tell you why the data is there in a publication and we'll edit that. We'll ask for comments on that, but you, you can have access to the data sooner is our hope. All right, and then, um, references for the project in case you haven't already found us we have a website i just tell people use the five letters of nccoe and use the three letters of pqc and you can find us we have a, a, a community of interest which means you won't miss any of our announcements um and then you know the the the, the you can ask us to join that and we'll put you on there and there's my email address. Um, I'm not gonna answer questions about where the standards stay, stay, are today. I'm gonna stop talking now and I'll use some of these slides and, and maybe a few about the standards if you ask those kind of questions. Well, I shouldn't say I'm not going to, but I don't, I don't, if I answer a question about the standards, it's because I have a good answer on a slide that Dustin used recently and I watched him use it and I know a little bit how to not sound wrong about it, but uh, I'm not a cryptographer, I'm an engineer. So Jason uh, and company, what, what kind of questions do we have already? If any, all right. We, uh, I see two in the in the Q and A. Um, the first one is from Robert Monroe, and um, he's asking, "Will there be collaboration with the federal national laboratories, um, etc., along with any universities um, on these?" Uh, yeah, you know that because we do brag that we collaborate with industry, academia, and government. And 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 Robert's probably looked across that list and and didn't see in you know academia. And and so, in this case, if if a university had done some work and and, a, and said that we've done some testing, that that's you know we do want to connect with anybody who's done testing and and you know just at least reference theirs and reference ours on the same page so people have an opportunity to go find it. The national lab question is interesting. I, I was at an event earlier and. And Ann uh, Duncan uh, from the CIO, from the you know, she mentioned the labs, and of course they're and she's mentioned five that are focused on quantum. Um, yeah, there's got to be something there. But Jason I, and and Robert, um, I see Robert on, on some of our coordination meetings at a government level. Um, I, not yet, not 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 me personally, except for just that I do a, a fair amount of outreach and occasionally bump into people at some of these places, but not formally yet. So I think that collaboration. Uh, 
CISA is one of our collaborators and they've got to, you know, get, get this in front of all the critical infrastructure folks. We're trying to, you know, we, we, we like that to help. And, and I think that'll be an opportunity to push with CISA to, to reach into those places because it's kind of a natural conversation, especially since those energy labs are, are near, you know, and dear to the critical infrastructure of energy. And then, I, I, Jason, you can read. I, I've got the questions up too. So we okay. want to go to, go to Sydney's yeah. next. Yeah, that's fine. When you read it, and I'll, I'll then I'll talk. All right, um, Sydney uh, Friedberg. I'm, I hope I said that right. Um, is is there is the forthcoming publication aimed at the private sector, civilian agencies, DoD, or all some of the both? It, it's an all. Um, and and you know who will read it? The DoD is obviously doing work in this space too. NIST is is responsible for the nine national security standards that are adopted, uh, you know, through other through law, through OMB and and GS OMB, um, and and the, the the process is there. But um, we wrote it to reach out to anybody who has been given the task to do discovery, and 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 it needs you know pushes from all these communities so that we can write more as we iterate on it and and continue down the path of what do what else can we do and we haven't like i said we haven't done all the work yet so there's other things within these work streams that we'll need to add to these publications as we move forward so the private sector if you if you've got a risk that's because you use public key encryption to protect vital things then and then yeah you want to pay attention we, we'd like you to pay attention to this we you know provably we'll get comments from all these groups that would be an interesting thing to sort of give you a chart at the end like who gave us comments because that means who we're reaching out to has been effective so i'd like to be able to say yes all and 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 then prove it to you all later and and your your being here helps me with that i hope get you know help me connect with a, a different groups we do like i was in and it and it's not just the u.s uh, I was in Amsterdam and, and, you know, listening to how the Dutch government's communicating with their critical infrastructure. I'm like, oh, you should know about our communications and vice versa. So cross pollinating internationally is important. These algorithms didn't just come from NIST. They, they, they didn't. They came from an international consortiums of smart cryptographers and mathematicians. And this whole challenge is universally, you know, across the whole world. So, um, you know, we hope that anybody who cares about discovery and interoperability and performance will, will want to see these. So Conrad's okay. back. Conrad's a friend as well. Go ahead. Um, we have one from Conrad Bovell. He, um, when will you be publishing lessons learned from PQC migration testing? So the bad news is Conrad heard me say, heard me say right at the beginning of November next week, and then the week after that next week. Lots of things, um, but 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 I do believe because I, I I we we just handed it to our tech editor and said get it ready for that thing that, that it gets pushed up as a PDF, uh, and we expect that to be uh, no later than early next week. Okay. And that's a dangerous yeah. thing. As soon as I say no later than I put a deadline on it, but that's what I expect, Conrad. <laughs> so you'll you'll have a chance and 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 you know say, share it with all your friends. Okay. <laughs> we have another one from Sydney. Um, any special guidance issues for the defense industrial base? Well, the the dib, uh, yes. Uh, read CNSA 2.0. React to CNSA 2.0. That's the that's the the IC Intelligence Department of Defense. You know, national security guidance for for this stuff, and and there's some challenges therein. But they've put a they've put an aggressive timeline on everything, and that's the timeline people people are paying attention to. So so that's where that that's that's my advice there. And then it tends to come up because the CNSA 2.0 in one particular area on on stateful hash based. Uh, signatures uh, pushes back to say look at a NIST pub and so my NIST colleagues have, have offered some some uh, other way you know ways to do you know quantum resistant um, state stateful hash based signatures and and that's uh, so that means we're still in the conversation but they lead it go ahead next question that All you right, want to use have, um, we have John uh, Kavanaugh he's asking um, we have been researching supply um, software supply chain as bomb um, and our uh, our bomb release components uh, with current encryption and optional uh, PQR. Um, how could we join your group sessions and communicate with CISA and ESF? Um, yeah. So as as a collaborator group, we we we're we're, we're closed in the sense that we have conversations about what we're going to do in our labs next. Um, and so, uh, Elizabeth, I'll give you a shot to answer that. Too. Atar could like to answer that too. I mean, you're here. 
and and pushing through this group to to reach you know your CISA members and and I can take messages so you have my email at the end of this too. S bomb is interesting and, and I'm trying to think you know R bomb what's the R stand for I'll catch up on that in a second but C bomb is a concept that has been pushed forward in this community and that's part of a little bit of a, a part of our paper just to describe what that that could be as an impact uh, crypt, you know cryptography bill of materials. And I can't quite see Elizabeth's whole response to know what yeah. on these She wants to answer the question live, so. Go for it. Um, no, well, well said, thank you, Bill. So <laughs> your, yours is closed, but there's other HR groups that, that we encourage you to uh, participate in. And and I think you can you can go to CISA and they have a resources page and find some of the the PQC focused uh, talent in their emerging technologies group and I think they have an email address where you can push on that button a little bit directly. Yeah. But I'm happy to to throw messages from from you to them, but, you know, adding adding a little compliment sandwich to it so they you know you guys are great and here's a problem and you guys are great because we all, all all need to do this together is really my point on that one on that silliness. Should we go to Kevin's or that you want to do anonymous? We can do the anonymous too first. Uh -huh. um, are, are you engaged with CISA to issue guidance on conducting automated assessments or is this volume C the guidance I've been hearing about? Now, volume C will be the interoperability and performance data results that we have from within our lab. Uh, volume B will be the discovery uh, things that we learned in our lab and, and that, that you should know about the technologies just at a high level, I think is where we're starting. I know is where we're starting. The, the CISA issue is of guidance. There's a, an ask in the M2302 memo to create a report to tell people how they're doing. Um, they are leveraging what they learned through us and with us. And, and then we need to figure out, we need to really get a meeting together with people who do automated assessments and, 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 and what are the asks that you need to see in a report like that. And so there's a little, in my mind, uh, as the, the the task in the M23 two memo says, CISA in coordination with NIST and, and NSA will do this. We need a little more coordination in front of ourselves so that we can we can help better in in that. I do expect you'll get something soon. Um, one of these things is a, a report that I'm not sure where to get posted, but they, I think they plan to post something on their website, and I can ask them and, and give you some clarity if you want to send me a direct note. And I know we have about four minutes left. Do you have right. um, yeah, go yeah. For it. We have um, what are the efforts in the area of getting the regulatory bodies involved in the process, both nationally and internationally, governance? Yeah, for me, I, I, I take the word regulatory off and sort of say the standards bodies, <clears throat> because a lot of the adoption is is replacing digital signatures and key exchange mechanisms in places and in, in, in protocols that you you rely on on a daily basis. So so you know the efforts in those areas are strong. Um, we have collaborators who've been doing the IETF X.509 work. There's a really cool web page that if I was generous, I'd get it and put it on my slide so you never miss it. All the different places they're playing um, in that space. Um, regulatory wise, I mean this non-regulatory, of course. Uh, CISA also claims non-regulatory, but you know they're pushing hard on the on the on the all the infrastructures to to you know start into this process. A lot of folks who I sit in meetings with when we talk about this problem space, they're like, without that push, you know, it's not going to happen. So there is there is a challenge there. Uh, you know, why why start? We also are starting to use words like you know you're you're developing your quantum readiness. The PQC, PQC algorithms are part of your strategy towards quantum readiness. PQC, as a, as a, you know, when you take that acronym and spell it out, makes some people think, wait, 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 for quote, you know, for the quantum threat to be realized. No, you, this is going to take long enough. You can start now. You'll never, you'll never regret having done an inventory. Well, I shouldn't say it that way. You'll learn so much about yourselves doing a, an inventory, and students who get to do inventories in classrooms will never unlearn how all this stuff relates and, and understanding operating systems and cryptography and everything and key stores and libraries is just a really cool way to become one of the smartest people in the room. And so I think this is a neat opportunity for us to, to really grow a workforce that, that, that sees a bigger pro, you know, a bigger challenge, but understands the foundation of crypto to deal with everything. You're going to need this for, for zero trust architectures. You're going to need this. This is now part of your inventory forever and ever. And you might not have a tool for it yet, but within the next three years, you should within the next two years, you know, those kind of things, the tools are going to, are already available. The, the algorithms for federal use are not available yet. You can't, I mean, you could use them, but you'd be in violation of some rules, right? You have to have a FIPS validated, uh, you know, product and and yeah. and that's not there yet that happens the when people start applying the day the standards become standard 
Yeah. We could try to squeeze this last one in. It's um, but what's being done to protect citizen information has already been taken by bad actors, which can be descript um, decrypted with quantum in the future. I don't know if you can answer that. Or no, not, I, but... I mean, I, I, unfortunately, that that data is out, and 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 if somebody develops a cryptanalytically relevant quantum computer, that's the, the the store now decrypt later challenge. And so, um, you know, I there's no that that will that will that's that's a bad thing. And and so the the good news is it's not really going to you know they're not going to. Well, I, I don't want to say we need a lot of we need some people to really talk about what that what that could mean for you and and put some plain, you know, help people understand the mental model of what is the threat at, at you and your daily use or is the threat at, at the, the, the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe being shared uh, over TLS today. You know, that that's something that we just don't have enough conversations about yet. So we're still just giving you the whole, oh, it's scary, uh, instead of telling you it's actually scary right here and right here, right here and right here. And that's very specific uh, and, and kind of hard to to to. to write down quickly or answer quickly. And now it's 1.30. Thank you all. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for, uh, for your participation with the questions. Thank you, Bill, for being here. Um, uh, if y'all see, there's uh, Bill's um, uh, email address, william.newhouse at nist.gov. If, um, um, if we will we, we, we send in the, um, the slide deck out after this. Um, uh, I'll, be giving it, I'll be giving it to the team here. And yes, you can make it available. All right. Thanks. Um, is there anything I missed? Nope, that was it. Bill, thank you again so much for speaking with the group. And uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks.